push and pull. Sometimes remind yourself of your relationship with Star Citizen, doesn't it? Today, we're going to go over how that methodology translates into the game, mounted turrets, hospitals, and much more as well. There's a lot, but I'm going to try and summarize it for you and probably fail. I'm Space Tomato, and this is your Inside Star Citizen Weekly Review. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And thanks to my newest supporter, Blue Knight. So, in my opinion, we aren't starting with the most exciting bit, but I'm also not a huge fan on combat. First up is our look at mounted guns, which I hope are eventually liftable and movable by us. The guns seem like they could be very fun for combat scenarios, but I think they really need to be movable to be have any real use in the PU. But let's see how they come along. Some final art obviously needs to be complete, but with the intent of allowing for many different types of weapons, I think this could be an important feature for any, say, security divisions in some hypothetical organization down the line. LR1K Sonic Cannon, anybody? Next we got a look at the continuation of force reaction improvements. These stagger animations make more sense to me than the knockdowns, and I think we'll add a lot of, mmm, let's call it complications to running around a ship during maneuvers. Weirdly enough, it's something I've been waiting to see. Like, as annoying as it might be to some, doesn't it just sound like a cool way to play when you don't need to rush around everywhere? I can see these things becoming annoying in firefights though, and there's going to be an interesting period of dialing it in, I think, when getting hit by gunfire. We've had periods of experimentation in Halo with something like this, and many people were not fans of how that went. It'll be interesting to see how this progresses over time. Bonus thought, maybe that zero-g push and pull will be brought to regular scenarios, allowing us to traverse with the aid of handles and bulkheads. Speaking of push and pull, one of those sleeper killer features, in my opinion, and also one of those features that makes me not excited for the initial implementation, but for what it means considering future developments using this technology. See, this feels a little more like the development of the engine itself rather than just the delivery of a new feature. As push and pull is a technological change that will allow for the interaction with many different objects in different ways. Imagine how much easier this is going to make moving all those boxes from the bunkers to your ship. You know, for the less lawful folks. I would never do that. I'm a good citizen. But besides the functionality, the trolley that they've introduced with this feature is so well done. The separate wheels are working correctly, the animations look good, physics seem accurate, and the functionality just makes a ton of sense. Especially, as always, with friends. Now for the sprint report. Starting with another update on docking. It is confirmed for an April release. As animations have been worked on and functionality has been completed for the most part, now the final dressing and polish is being applied. The lighting differences from what we saw last year are interesting, quite contrasty in comparison, though lighting's not complete so we'll have to see how it looks in the final delivery. At this point what I'm most excited to see with this addition, or rather here, is the audio design. Regardless, this will probably be one of the last times we hear about this feature, besides the monthly report, until release. A new harvestable is being worked on by the Planet Content team. Originally from Terra Prime, this little algae fellow is going to be good for eating, but is also the first harvestable we are hearing about that is good for medicinal use. So not only will it be more valuable to sell, this could very well be a hint at future crafting opportunities. With updates to the player status system always being worked on, this may be an ingredient that CIG is considering for additional buffs in the future, if you know how to prepare it properly. Of course, as we've all been following the Stanton system, this very first star system has been getting that polish. Something I tackled about in length in my latest video detailing the best additions in 313. Besides missiles, I'm sorry those got delayed. Here we are getting a look at the newly improved Lyria. 
an icy moon in orbit around Arcorp. Now, recently they said they felt some of the moons were becoming a bit too similar in design, and I was almost certain this included Lyria and Yella. It seems this may be an attempt to help differentiate the two. And this is another look at that Stanton polish pass they're doing on this initial star system as they prepare the new star systems we're getting in the next year or so. We also got a quick look at new coral additions in Hurston, just in case you needed another object to stub your toe on. Colonialism. Boy oh boy do we hear a lot about this, huh? This is going to be a massive addition to the game in the distant future. Generally, we don't get to see a feature from concept through modeling onto the white box phase and beyond. This is one of the first times they've done this with a large feature, and it really goes towards showing the process it takes to launch a big feature into a game. Here we are looking at the actual placement and in-game modeling of the true assets. This is a chance to figure out the modularity of the buildings, the scale of the items, and how everything will fit together. The styling is very different from anything we've gotten before, and wow, the materials are looking really good. Just throw a little wear and tear on top of that wear and tear, and I'll feel right at home. For any of you guys who have been following my real life situation, you know what I'm talking about. What I'm getting from this and expecting is that many of the objects and props that are being made for these locations will actually tie into their respective systems, such as the power generation and storage system, life support, cooling stations, or communications arrays. You can actually see more hints about this on earlier videos detailing the locations. I wonder how this will factor into the gameplay that players get to take part in when they visit these different homesteads. They're quickly turning into one of the stop gaps between outposts and cities, and seem to be shaping out to be a large part of the game for citizens when they arrive. Also, possibly another look at the new visual target for Crusader? In addition to these buildings, hospitals are starting to receive early passes at production as well, something I'm hoping we can see the first version of in October. These locations will include pharmacies with things like med pens and COVID vaccines, ambulance drop points for medical missions and professionals, and oh god, what are we control now? Anyways, Orison and New Babbage, the two newest cities, seem to be the first locations for hospitals to appear. But we already know where Arcorp and Lorville will have theirs. Should be interesting to see how ambulance stations work with those locations without a large rework. Finally, a beautiful proof of concept. Now, this location was not made to be put into the game, but more a showcase of the work that the Montreal team is doing in the new studio as they start to get up to speed and familiar with CIG's processes. Now, let me say, I was wrong. I confidently said a few months ago that I didn't think this studio would get up to speed and actually working for months. And while this isn't exactly going into the game, this is not the level of work I expected to see just three months later. This really is incredible work and feels like the first AAA in-game location outside of cities and space stations. This could absolutely be part of a mainstream shooter level and that's the quality I'm looking for in all of this game's points of interest. I wouldn't be surprised if by the time something like this was brought into the game, NPCs were able to be placed in the locations for various reasons. Which makes sense, because this reminds me a lot of the wreck featured at CitizenCon in 2016, which featured NPCs as well. And while this specific wreck won't be in the game to replace the current wreck of the same ship anytime soon, it speaks towards the quality of work we can expect in the future from this new team working on Star Citizen. That wraps it up for this week's episode. I totally said I would summarize, but I always end up having more to say than I thought. If you're into these reviews of Star Citizen's development, I actually do them every week while CIG is putting out the content. And I also do monthly reports every month on what's been going on for said month. With an additional summary, I post in a blog post for all of my patrons if you'd like to take advantage of that and the other perks that I offer to my supporters. Don't forget to keep an eye out for my secret code, which will help you in my monthly giveaways. And head on over to my Twitch channel to join me in game for some fun. 
And if you just got into the game or you're looking for a group of people who are into the same things you are to run with, consider joining my new growing organization, the Garden Interstellar Initiative. Complete with training options, various divisions to take part in, a racing team, and more. You can check all that out in the video description below as well as my general Discord server, which is also down there. Thanks again everybody for checking this video out and watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, The Alpaca, The Huntress, Ben N, Dasek, Holson, Coop, Guilty, Conscious, Falcus, Vipus, and Extreme Tuber.